Okay. All right. Um, so today we are going to discuss. We're going to discuss a um, proposal. How you come up with your research proposal. So we want to talk about what contents are going to be in that document. Okay. So what really is a proposal? A proposal is a plan. So you're basically planning how you're going to carry out this research of yours and then you are actually going to give us a lot of detail to show that you know exactly what you're going to do. For example, the proposal is going to have the title of a research. That's going to be the first thing that is there and you would have the title So this would be the first thing that you actually see when you look at somebody's proposal. Of course, you have a template for the university, but you are going to come up with a title for a research. What is a title supposed to look like? Well, this is supposed to be a succinct statement which really just tells us something about your research. I must tell you that the reason why I was emphatic that we should start by discussing the issue of variables first before we start talking about the whole process of proposal development is because in the title you would see the variables coming out. You see issues such as uh, the independent variables, you see the dependent variables and you also see few other things that would make a good title. So, how do you write the title? How do you come up with the title? Well, at this level, I think if you have written so many things, it shouldn't have more than 15 to 16 words. I think that would be a decent title. It would be succinct enough. Unless you're studying something that has I don't know what kind of name. But one of the things that you should see in a good title is this. The first thing you should be able to see the dependent variable. That's the first thing you see in a good title. Okay? The second thing, the independent variable. Primarily, you want to bring out your primary independent variable in your title. The third thing that should come out from the title, it should be the study population. So this particular is going to give you the group of people to whom these study findings are able to be generalized. All right? Who is this study? The finding, to whom are you going to generalize these, these findings of the study? So the study population has to be well stipulated. And this should include the people that are actually eligible for this study. Okay? Because this becomes the population to whom you generalize the findings. Remember, you would actually get a study sample, and then from the study sample you carry out your research, and after that you make the inferences to generalize to the study population, right? So you need to actually clearly stipulate what your study population is. And then I think the, the other thing that should be visible is, um, let's call it the study site, or maybe the location. It's desirable because in certain circumstances, you'd find that you'd carry out a study that could actually only be generalized to a certain geographical location. Okay? So this is whom are you actually going to generalize these findings to? Which location, they say? Because sometimes you find that based on the kind of study you're doing, even 
the study site or the location of the study starts having an impact on the outcome whereby if you study participants from one area and participants from another area they actually give you different outcomes is that okay so you need to actually have a study site or the location of the study now these are the things that you really need to put into your title and I also said that you need to keep it about 15 words about 15 words should be good enough okay try to keep it there as we go you would be able to see that this or these four that I've actually mentioned here are going to be consistent everywhere. Are going to be, it's like a theme. For example, when you write your title, you should actually see these four things. All right? Apart from that, you would be able to see these four things in your, in your general or the main objective of the study. It should sound like this one. It's very similar to the sound of the title. You should see the same four things in the title. You should see them in the title, general objective, and in your research question. You should also be able to see them in your hypothesis. So these things are actually linked. And of course, it makes sense that you should see them in your hypothesis because as you carry out this study, your hypothesis is something you're going to test. So it's going to be linked to the general objective, not so. And then the general objective is something you want to actually determine. So you have to actually work it out in such a way that you should be able to answer that objective using the hypothesis that you have pressed. Is that okay? So, let's give an example of one title and try to see whether we can manage to decipher these four things in there. Okay? I can just think of anything. Is there anyone who probably has a research they want to talk about? Yes. The effect of? ESBLs. Okay. Effect of effect of ES S B L uh -huh. on antimicrobial therapy. Okay. Do we leave it there? That's how they wrote the title. Yeah, that's how you dropped it. That's how you dropped it. Yeah, I dropped it like this. Okay, great. This is fine. I think for now this is fine. I want us to start from something like this so that we see how we can go ahead and polish it if, if, if possible. Alright, so this is our title. So from this title, let's look at it and assess whether it has all the four important things that you have to see in the title. What is the dependent variable in here, in this sentence? What's the dependent variable? Remember we said the dependent variable can also be called the what? The dependent, dependent variable is also called the what? The what variable? The outcome variable. We talked about the tests next week, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. So the dependent variable is also the outcome variable. So what's the outcome here? Effect. It's effect. The outcome. It will result in an effect. Sorry. 
Correct. So it's going to be antimicrobial therapy. Right? Okay, so at least we have the dependent variable. What about the independent variable here? Yeah. That the population? We don't have. So which organisms are we talking about? Klebsiella and E. coli. and E. coli. Yes. Okay. Klebsiella. So effect of ESBL on antimicrobial therapy. Among the Klebsiella and E. coli. <clears throat> among. Okay. Among the ESBL producing ESBL producing organisms. Okay. You would want to be more specific here. Okay, Klebsiella, typically Klebsiella and E. coli. and E. coli species. I think we want to add a bit more here. That we want to add a bit more about uh, on these Klebsiella species. Like where are they isolated from? Is it from people with because that becomes the population you want to generalize to? Like patients are diagnosed with gastroenteritis, for example. You know what I mean? Yeah. We want to at least say this is our study population. Of, of people that are actually going to be of, of interest. So, effects of ESBL on antimicrobial therapy among Klebsiella and E. coli species isolated from patients. You can actually say any patients, or you can actually say under five children, for example, you can actually say um, 